Prey is the fifth installment of the Predator franchise set 300 years ago and focuses on the first Predator hunt on Earth. You might be thinking, what about Alien vs Predator? Don't you mean it's the seventh installment? Shut up, nerd! They are not canon and frankly total garbage in my humble opinion. Prey is pretty straightforward, but there are a few easter eggs such as the pistol all us geeks are excited about and a small post-credit animation thing that we will discuss in this video. So here's what happened in Prey. Spoilers ahead obviously for Prey and pretty much all previous Predator films. Quick plot! The year is 1719 and a young Comanche woman, Nauru, an experienced healer, is living in the northern plains with her tribe but is rather unhappy with her position. She dreams of being a great hunter like her brother but is often dismissed probably due to being a woman. She is not considered tough enough or warrior enough. She is not perceived to be a threat, something that will come into play later on. In classic Predator style, a lone Predator is dropped off on Earth, probably by his mum and dad, and goes about stalking and hunting various animals and people. You know, looking for the biggest challenge. Classic Predator initiation, Predator coming of age type stuff. The difference is that this is probably the first Predator, at least that we know about, who has ever come to Earth. So in this pre we are seeing potentially the first ever encounter between Predator and Human, which is pretty neat. In true Predator film style, the Predator goes about bumping off people with relative ease until of course he meets his match. In this case, it's Naru, the Comanche woman. Also, can I just say, what a performance. Amber Midthunder knocks this one out of the park. So, inevitably, Naru defeats the Predator and predictably, yet still awesomely, becomes the great warrior slash hunter that she's always dreamed of. And that's basically the plot. So let's dive a bit deeper. How can this young Comanche chick defeat the ultra-advanced Predator using dated weaponry? Well, it all comes down to how anyone beats a Predator in this franchise, basically by outsmarting them. I know a lot of incels who think they are alphas out there have cracked the shits that a woman managed to beat the Predator dude. A primitive woman at that. But realistically, all humans throughout the franchise have been using primitive technology compared to the Predator. It doesn't matter how big your biceps are, man, nor how many guns you have. That has never been enough to beat the super technologically advanced Predator now has it. How did Dutch beat the Predator in the original film? Not by flexing his awesome pecs, but by outsmarting it. And that's exactly what happened in this film. By careful observation and intelligent analysis, Nauru, who is also an experienced tracker, let's not forget, studied the Predator and its movements and learnt of its weaknesses. Specifically, she figured out that the Predator only attacks those it deems a threat, a classic trait that we have seen throughout the franchise. And thus, if you're unarmed or not worthy of a kill, the Predator will most often leave you alone. They are glory seekers after all, and there is no glory in killing an unarmed, defenseless opponent. Nauru learns this when captured by the French fur trappers. Is tied up and used as bait, yet the Predator ignores her and instead decides to rip apart the Frenchies. You know, because they had guns and were shooting at him and shit. Nauru also figures out that the medicine she carries is a useful defense against the alien. Predators use heat vision to locate their prey. This is what we've seen throughout the franchise. In the original film, Dutch figures this out more or less too and covers himself in the cool mud, making him near invisible to the Predator's vision. This is how he was able to defeat the Predator. In this film, Nauru has a medicine that cools the blood the body temperature of whomever consumes it, making them more or less invisible to the Predator's heat vision as well. We see this early on in the film, it's basically a Chekhov's gun scenario. We know very early on that the magical medicine will come into play later, and it does. Thirdly, she deduces that the helm that the Predator wears is what aids his projectile weaponry. It's some kind of device, she figures this out, and through clever trickery, Nauru manages to steal his hat and ultimately use it against him in the climax of the film. So using skill, smarts, and straight up badassness, Nauru becomes the first human ever to defeat a predator, paving the way for many more badasses in the future. Okay, so what's up with this gun? In Predator 2, Mike, played by Danny Glover, manages to kill a Predator as well, which earns him the respect of the other Predators, you know, for being a badass warrior. Predators love that kind of shit, and as a reward, he is given a trophy in the form of this ancient pistol, which is engraved with the name Raphael Adelini, and the date, 1715. At the time, this was a huge fucking deal, because it meant at least we assumed that it meant that the Predators had been coming to Earth for hundreds of years. I mean, the Predators could have picked it up at a pawn shop, but we're 
all pretty certain it's meant to mean that the Predators have been visiting Earth since, like, for ages, hey? In Prey, we see the origin of the gun. The French fur trapper gave Nauru the gun as a thank you for her helping him with his injuries. We can assume this French dude is Raphael and is credited as such on IMDb, so yeah, that's pretty much the owner of the gun. The origin of the gun. That's the gun's backstory. But as we see in Predator 2, it ends up back in the hands of the Predators and eventually Mike. This, along with the end credit animation where we see the ships returning to Earth, alludes to a prequel sequel. Potentially a second movie that follows Nauru and her tribe, perhaps. Either way, the Predators are definitely coming back. This is canonical fact, which can only mean bad news for the Comanche tribe. At the very end of the film, Nauru tells her tribe that danger is on the horizon, I'm paraphrasing. This could be a reference to the French fur trappers alluding to European colonization, which by this time in history had already been going on for like 200 years, but it also probably is a reference to the Predators, who we know will return, potentially to seek vengeance for their fallen comrade, or by realizing their buddy had been killed and that humans are indeed worthy opponents. Predators are always looking for a worthy opponent and Nauru has proved that humans are a threat. They can beat one predator, so maybe lots of predators are coming back. That's that's potentially what is going to happen in the future. And that's basically it, man. That's the, that's the story of Prey 2022. It's a pretty straightforward film. There's not too much to go around here. It sort of goes back to the predator roots and that's fucking it, mate. Thanks for watching Jake's Place, my friends. What did you think of the movie Prey? Leave a comment and let's get a friendly discussion going. <coughs> That's cheap. If you enjoyed my video, then be sure to do all the YouTube stuff, subscribe and whatnot, share it around, it really helps out. And if you want more of this, then check out my other channel, Chew Roo. It's an Australian-centric, but you don't have to be Australian to get it. Kind of like a comical lifestyle thing where we're doing fishing and foraging and heaps of cooking and I've got a whole homebrew section. I recently put out a video where I got a big old bag of apples and turned it into hard cider and proceeded to get fucking shit faced the rest of the afternoon. If you want to see more of me and a little insight to my private life, I'm not sure why you would, but if you do, check that out. Thanks for watching and farewell for now.